In my last video, I made Flappy Bird without a computer by drawing the sprites and writing the code on paper. In the comments, a few people asked how I drew the sprites and got them into Scratch, so that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. In my game, you'll be controlling a rocket flying through space, and you'll have to collect gold coins while avoiding asteroids. I'm going to draw the rocket twice, so it's animated, and I'll draw numbers for the score. For the coin, I'll use this actual coin, and for the asteroid, I'll use this rock. I'm going to start by drawing the rocket. You can really use anything, but I recommend drawing sprites pretty big like this. Now I'm going to sharpie this, which you don't have to do, but it makes the sprite stand out way more. There we go. Now, I'm going to color the rock. Again, you can do whatever you want in it, so in my experience, it works way better with really bright colors. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go with a classic red spaceship. I'm using colored pencils. And for the window, I'm going to leave a little shine and color in the rest blue. I think this looks great. Now, I'm going to draw another rocket next to this one, since I want the fire to be animated in my game. And okay, here we have the two rockets. They'll be animated for the fire. Next, I'm going to draw numbers to show the score in my game. I recommend doing this because the normal variable isn't hand drawn, and this doesn't take too much effort. If you watch the Flappy Bird video, you'll have an idea of where I'm going with this. And that's it. I'm going to sharpie and color the numbers now. I also drew this explosion for when you die, which I forgot to record. So you can definitely draw a background for your game like I did in my last video, but in my case, it's basically just going to be a black background. I'm just going to go into Google Images, and since I want black paper, I'm going to type in black construction paper background, and you'll see there's a bunch of results. This one's really nice. I'm just going to right click and save image. Now the next step is to take pictures of all your sprites. I recommend doing this in a brightly lit space without dark shadows. To achieve this, I used a ring light, although you can definitely do this anywhere with good lighting. So I took a picture on my phone of the sheet of paper with all the sprites on it, and here's that picture. I also took a picture of the rock and the coin. If you're using objects like that, I recommend putting them all onto a, a blank sheet of paper and taking a picture in the same way as the other one. To get the images from my phone to my computer, I just uploaded the images to Google Drive on my phone, and then downloaded them on my computer. So once you have your right, we're going to edit them. So open any web browser and go to photop.com. Once here, click open from computer, and choose your image. It'll now create a new project which we're going to be working in. We're going to start by adjusting the colors. Click on your background, and then go to image, adjustments, curves. Now this window will open, move it to the side so you can see what you're doing, and you're going to click this black box, zoom in on a part of your image in Sharpie, and you'll see that it now makes the Sharpie black. Also click white and select paper. This will just make your sprites a lot more vibrant. You can also select gray if you have some pencil work. It depends on the look you're going for. I'm going to play around with this a bit. Okay, I think this looks nice. So I'm going to hit OK, and now we're going to start cutting out into the sprite. Here is a quick tutorial on how to cut things out in Photop. So to start, we're going to hold our mouse on this until this filament menu shows up, and select Magnetic Lasso Select. 
The normal lasso select tool follows your mouse exactly, so you'd have to move really slowly and carefully to get a good clean cutout. Meanwhile, the magnetic lasso select, if you just click and then move your mouse, then it will follow the outline of whatever shape you're trying to cut out. It's not flawless, sometimes you have to click to get it to stay on track, but this is still way easier. I like to click at most of the sharp angles, and now I'm going to start actually cutting out this rocket. We're going to edit it afterwards, so don't worry about making mistakes, we're going to fix them later. And here we have a basic cutout. But if you look over here, you'll see that this little area should be there, but isn't. And now we're going to use the normal lasso select tool. We're going to select the subtract tool, slowly draw the area that you want to cut out, and boom, there it goes. Likewise, say we cut off this section over here by accident. What you could do is select the Unite tool, which is the second one, and slowly work your way around, and that will add it. This weird little area is in the middle, so just select that, and there we go. Once you have this nice selection, hit Control shift j on your keyboard, all at the same time. And double-click right here where it says Wire 1, and name it Rocket. And if we click this little eye to hide the background, you'll see that the rocket is perfectly cut out. Now select the background by clicking on it, and repeat this process for all the other sprites. While I'm cutting out the sprites, why not go like the video and subscribe to my channel now? It's free, and it helps out way more than you'd think. Now back to the video. And here we have the completed sprite sheet. If you'd like to, you can adjust each layer individually. For example, this number 8 is pretty dark, so I'm going to go Image, Adjustments, Brightness, and Contrast, then just turn it up until you're happy with the result. And once you're finished, right-click the background, click Delete, go to File, Export Layers, uncheck the first box, and Export Layers, and it will download. When the files download, they'll be in a .zip file. In, I'm in Windows, but it's probably similar on macOS. Select your zip file, click Extract All, and hit Extract. Once you do that, there will be a folder with all your images that you cut out. The next step is to create a new project. I'm using Turbo Warp here, which is a mod of Scratch that had some extra features. Start by creating each of the sprites for your game by hovering over the Add Sprite button and clicking the paintbrush. Then upload all the images by going into each sprite's costumes tab, hovering over the Add Costume button, clicking the Upload Costume button, and selecting the image. I added the two rocket sprites, the rock, the coin, the numbers for the score, and the explosion for when you die. Then I resized and rotated my sprites as needed, so the scale would be correct in the game. Finally, I imported the background. Then I coded the game. That's not the point of this tutorial, so I won't go into too much detail, but there will be a link to the game in the description of this video. And I'll be releasing a tutorial on the score sometime soon, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it! Here's my finished game! I think it looks great. If you want to play the game or see the code, there will be a link to the Scratch project in the description of this video. I'll be posting a tutorial on how to code the number engine for the score sometime soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it! Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video!